let's uh, take a quick review of what we have done in the previous lecture and then we'll take it forward to uh, model development which are control relevant if i put it in abstract form what we have discussed ordinary differential equations x are the states or x are dependent variables u and d represent inputs independent inputs u represent manipulated variables d represent disturbances y here are measured outputs now i am using this notation here y belongs r n which means uh, x is a vector which is n dimensional u is a vector which is m dimensional r is a vector uh, y is a vector measurements are r dimensional there are r measurements there are n states there are m inputs and there are d disturbances so we are looking at a system which is multi variable in general okay then we want to have a local perturbation model this local perturbation model is developed in the neighborhood of some steady state operating point this is denoted here by x bar u bar d bar well if you notice here i am using uh, capital letters to denote all the variables capital letters here indicate that these are absolute values okay we will move on to deviation variables i'll start using small letters for deviation variables so these are absolute values and then i want to do multi variable taylor series expansion in the neighborhood of the operating point okay the first question is bar these are dependent variables independent inputs are only disturbances and manipulated variables okay if i specify levels of u bar and d bar using the nonlinear differential equation i can solve for the steady state i can solve for f of x bar u bar d bar equal to 0 i do this using newton raphson method or newton's method or some iterative method for solving non linear algebraic equations steady state is nothing but uh, when you convert this differential equation and view it at steady state you have a set of uh, non linear algebraic equations which have to be solved simultaneously so that can be just done using standard techniques for uh, non linear equation solving and then for given d bar and u bar you can find out x bar this is uh, using uh, a well known method such as uh, newton's method having found x bar u bar d bar we want to use multi variable taylor series expansion so what is this multi variable taylor series expansion this is my multi variable taylor series expansion i am going to expand the right hand side i'm going to expand the right hand side in the neighborhood of x bar u bar and d bar okay now here f is a function vector f is a vector of functions we know already what what it is partial derivative of f with respect to x is going to be a matrix it's going to be a matrix what is the dimension of this matrix f is a function vector there are n functions n differential equations and x has a dimension n it will be n cross n this will be n cross n uh mind you when you write this equation you have to be very very careful about the order in which variables appear i cannot write uh, xt minus x bar i cannot change this order of i cannot change order of this matrix and this vector this is a vector this is a matrix okay so matrix times vector it has to be that way you cannot uh, even for even by mistake uh, to change the order what is the meaning of this x bar u bar d bar written here it means partial derivatives are yeah evaluated at x bar u bar d bar once you once you fix this x bar u bar d bar and once you evaluate this partial derivatives at a particular point this is a constant matrix okay 
same is the case with dou f by dou u dou f by dou u is a derivative of function vector with respect to inputs this is a matrix which is uh, n cross m and you have a matrix which is n cross d which is dou f by dou d uh, so there are two uh, there are three terms appearing here two because of inputs one because of the state itself just look at this equation it tells you that uh, this is not a this is not a algebraic equation this is a differential equation a differential equation has a memory of past okay if you if you try to analyze the terms in this equation it has three terms okay on the right hand side it says that the current derivative current rate of change is function of what has happened in the past where does the past information come from x x is the past information okay whatever has happened from time 0 to current time t is getting captured through xt or xt minus x bar in this case perturbation what is happening new what is the new input that is coming in that is u and t okay so it just says that rate of change of x or perturbations in or small perturbations in x is governed by this particular equation uh, equation 2 i have just written the steady state equation i am going to subtract uh, basically at steady state uh, we know that f of x bar u bar d bar is 0 okay so uh, actually you are subtracting 0 from both sides but uh, i am subtracting equation 1 from equation 2 okay and I'll get the perturbation model. I'll get a perturbation which is x minus x bar. Okay. When I subtract, when I subtract this equation from this equation, f will vanish from both sides. Okay. On the left hand side, I'll get x minus x bar. Okay. And right hand side will be again x minus x bar, u minus u bar, and d minus d bar. This term will vanish when I subtract. Okay. In the same way, I am going to linearize the map or the measurement model. Measurement model is y or measured variables which are some functions of states. Okay, uh, I have taken the most general case where g is uh, some nonlinear function. Okay, and I am developing a perturbation model. So small y t is a perturbation from the steady state y bar which is given by dou g by dou x, dou g by dou x will be a vector which is r cross n, there are n states, I have just given these equations, these matrices here for your convenience, so these are uh, n cross n, n cross m, n cross d and r cross n matrices, these are evaluated at the steady state operating point, so once you evaluate them at a particular operating point you have fixed matrices okay uh, so i'm going to i uh, it's inconvenient to work with those do x do f by do x and all that i'm going to switch to a simplified notation a b c d you open a uh, any textbook on control they actually start with this model they don't tell you how how you got this model they just start with this model x dot is equal to a x plus b u plus h d and so on so, but actually these are perturbation variables, these are small perturbations in neighborhood of the operating point and the connection with the models that come from physics that you know from your engineering background is actually through Taylor series expansion, linear approximation, local approximation and so on, okay. So, uh, as far as controller design is concerned, I am going to use this simplified local linear model, why? Linear differential equations are very well understood, even if they are multivariable. I can solve them, I can manipulate them, I can play with them, uh, you can solve them analytically, okay. And that is going to be the strength when you develop linear control theory. Well, what is my aim ultimately? What is what is the aim of control? Get to the set point, somebody else can tempt. Safety, okay, I will put it in little more abstract term. I want to shape the dynamics. Okay, I want to shape the dynamics the way I want. Sometimes I want to maintain at certain point, sometimes I want to move from a point A to point B, right. Where is the trouble here in this equation? One trouble is 
disturbance okay one trouble is disturbance what is it that you have in your hand is you so i want to shape i want to choose you in such a way that output y has a desired transient behavior okay so i want to manipulate and if i want to manipulate i should be able to you know uh, turn around this equation the way i want that is possible very i mean that becomes very easy when you linear differential equations it's not that you cannot do it with non linear differential equations well for for us to go there would take at least two more courses to reach the point where we start looking at non linear differential equation manipulations yeah yes we cannot many times capture h so i will be actually dealing with it uh, much more elaborately in next few lectures so right now what i am saying is that see in this particular case the assumption is that you have a good model coming from physics availability in that case i can find out h matrix okay well when you don't have a model what do you do will answer that question later right now we are considering a scenario where you have a good first principle model you have a good mechanistic model and this is possible for some systems see it's not that uh, i mean some systems in uh, say robotics okay many uh, the, the equations that come from mechanics can be written quite precisely okay so it's not that uh, uh, i mean this course the way we are going to go about is not related to any particular domain though it, it says advanced process control you know it's it's advanced control of course so in some cases you have these models in some cases you can write those you can find out h matrix starting from a mechanistic model okay well we have seen this matrix for quadrupole tank setup and then uh, actually uh, this is the steady state operating conditions which have put them on the corner right corner um the steady state y bar and u bar is nothing but four levels and two inputs which are given there okay and if i actually linearize substitute uh, values i get these three matrices a b c there is no h there is no disturbance considered right now so there are uh, three matrices that we get and then we said well we can actually convert this into a transfer function matrix i just wanted to map this to a transfer function matrix the 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 model that we have is actually a, this this model that we have got here is called as a state space model okay it's model linear differential equation uh, it tells you something about what is happening inside through the states okay but all the states may not be measured in this particular case out of four levels only two levels are measured okay so we know we know here this model is more powerful than the input output model It tells you something about uh, things that are not measured now the next thing is uh, you know you know is through laplace transforms uh, if i assume that initial is zero uh, and if i take laplace transforms uh, we did this last time um, we get this transfer function matrix y which relates to u and to d uh and for this particular case i calculated a transfer function matrix this turns out to be this uh 2 cross 2 matrix two level measured h1 h2 two level uh lower levels and two voltage inputs you can see the transfer function matrix tells you that uh level 1 is affected by both you know v1 and v2 level 2 is affected by both u v1 and v2 okay matrix is full uh in reality when you go to a, a complex system you will have many measurements you will have many inputs and typically the matrix will not be uh, you know diagonal it will be full many things affect many things it's very difficult to find a system in which only one input affects only one output very very rare okay and we started looking at uh, this this computer oriented models and we said we have to worry about uh, two things one is measurements are sampled okay uh you have 
you know a regular interval at which the measurements are coming to my computer and I am going to denote, denote them by y k that is my notation actually y k means measurement perturbation variable y available at time k t k t is k is the sampling instant I start from say uh, 0 1 2 3 4 gap between two samples could be 1 second could be 5 seconds could be 10 milliseconds depends upon the system which you are considering uh, and then inputs I said are going to be piecewise constant that is because I am sending inputs my from my computer my computer can only generate sequence of numbers my computer cannot generate a continuous signal I need a device called as a D to A converter digital to analog converter and this digital to analog converter will reconstruct a continuous time signal a wall control wall or a stepper motor or whatever is your actuating element will receive a continuous signal it will not receive uh, you know pulses or it will not receive impulses uh, finite impulses it will receive a continuous time signal. So now I need to adjust my model to the reality that uh, I have this differential equation and I want to develop a computer oriented model okay a computer oriented model which in which we convert the differential equation into a difference equation what kind of difference equation I want to hop in time okay I want to go from time instant 1 to 2 2 to 3 3 to 4 okay every time in my computer I am going to get one sample at you know let us say 5 seconds interval I want a model that relates what happened now to the next instant what happened in the next instant to instant after that okay so convert a differential equation into a difference equation what are the constraints or what is the uh, at let us now now let us not worry about time 0 let us look at uh, a situation where we are standing at some sampling instant k okay at current time okay and I want to I, I have the I know the state value at current time which is x k I am going to denote it as x k here this is a short term notation for x at time t k where t k is nothing but k times t capital T here is the sampling interval okay capital T here is sampling interval so sampling interval will depend upon how to choose a sampling interval is somewhat complex uh, business and there is uh, a theorem called Shannon sampling theorem which applied um, you can probably go back and read uh, in the references that I have given I do not want to spend time on Shannon sampling theorem here but uh, what is important I will tell you qualitatively you should uh, sample fast enough so that you do not miss out the major features of your signal okay what is this you know from system to system it is different okay uh, in a furnace which is very very slow it might be sufficient to sample every one minute you do not miss too much if you take uh, furnace temperature measurement every one minute because furnace has a very slow dynamics okay automobile you need samples every you know 50 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds okay uh, we were controlling a fuel cell we needed samples at 10 milliseconds so it depends upon what is what is so this t could be you know whatever depending upon the system and as an engineer you have to take a call what should be the sampling interval okay so digital control system the signals arrive okay a measurement arrives at instant time kt and a input is sent out at uh, to the system at time kt so let us let us call it instant k sampling instant k so I want to convert a differential equation into difference equation I am going to use a notation here uh, xk is nothing but the state of the system at instant k okay it is a short shorthand notation yk is the output measurement at instant k uk is the input sent out to the plant at instant k okay now how do I convert well I want you to uh, remember something that you have done in your first year of engineering remember integrating factors how do you integrate this differential so you take 
a x t on the left hand side then you have an integrating factor e to the power minus a t right then you multiply both sides by integrating factor and then you integrate both the sides i am going to do the same thing except i have to do it for a vector differential equation okay so i need something i need something that is equivalent to an integrating factor but now i don't have a scalar here in this equation i have just put here a scalar equation a is a scalar b is a scalar okay this is a very simple system it's very easy to integrate this differential equations so all of you know how to do it uh i need to define something equivalent to an integrating factor i need something equivalent to this what is nice thing about e to the power at or e to the power t if you differentiate what will you get back it's a very nice it's a very nice signal continuous time signal if you differentiate e to the power t you will get back e to the power t uh okay uh i'm going to introduce what is called as max matrix exponential now by analogy you can see how it is defined see the the factor here one here is replaced by i identity matrix okay then you have a times t t is a scalar of course uh well it's convention to write it like this um probably when you do scalar and matrix multiplication you should not write scalar after the matrix you should write ta but books sometimes write interchangeably okay now uh look at this new the introduced matrix exponential well let me tell you something e to the power at is defined as limit of the infinite sequence on the right hand side just like e to the power you know scalar at is defined as this is this is a uh, definition of e to the power at now i need to find out what is the derivative of this particular particular you know matrix exponential just take derivative on the right hand side okay do you see what i have done here i can take out a and derivative of e to the power at turns out to be e to the power at minus a first of all do not forget e to the power at is a matrix even though we write it as e to the power at and e is a scalar e to the power at is a matrix the definition is i plus at times a square t square and so on. so this is uh, a matrix so when i differentiate this i get e to the power at post multiplied by a matrix you cannot write pre multiplied it's post multiplied by a. how am i going to use this okay now i'm going to go the same way that what we do for the scalar case i'm going to multiply both the sides by the integrating factor okay is everyone with me on this i am p multiplied by uh in this case you can actually in this case you can in my derivation it's convenient to write a in this particular case you can write a or either way well what i want to stress is uh, when you uh, probably i overstressed it when you deal with the So you have to be very, very careful. You know, uh, order. Order is not uh, to be missed. Out. Okay. Uh, now I am rearranging this equation. I have just taken uh, e to the power a t on the left hand side. Okay. So the second step is everyone with me on this? Yeah. <coughs> And now. i am going to integrate integrate from where to where i am standing at sampling instant k i am just worried about going from k to k plus 1 okay 
I just want a module that relates what is happening now to the next sampling instant. Okay, that's all. That's all I'm worried about. So I'm going to integrate from time k t to k plus one t. Where t is of course the sampling interval. Okay. Now here the right hand side integral can be simplified because what we know is within this sampling interval my inputs are constant piecewise constant okay within the sampling interval my inputs are piecewise constant so i am able to take this ukt outside and then i only have to integrate uh, e to the power a times b dt okay this integral i have to compute okay is everyone with me on this d of look at what is here this is d of this when i integrate this i will get i will get you know uh, e to the power at xt i apply two limits i have skipped one in between step is anyone has doubt with this I have just applied two limits. I have taken the integral, applied two limits, and moved one part to the right side. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's a tau. Yeah, yeah. That's a typo. Yeah, please correct it. This is e to the power a tau, not a t. in the second term it's important it's quite important what you say is quite important okay now or either either a tau or i have to change to dt either of the two okay i think uh, changing to dt will help instead of changing everything to tau okay so is this step clear okay i have just integrated the left hand side applied the two limits okay and rearranged right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to multiply both the sides by e to the power minus a k plus 1 t okay moment i do that see what remains here here it is minus a k t this is plus a k plus 1 t so the difference will be only e to the power at that's what remains okay here my integral changes to this is it okay i'm just going slow because you should you know understand the steps is this clear yeah i'm going to multiply plus a both sides now a to the power k plus 1 t k plus 1 is a fixed value so i can take it inside the integral without making any ha huh. ha huh. it is minus oh this should be oh there is one more typo here yeah you should have yeah in this in this equation uh i should have e to the power minus it should have minus 80 um question that's better is that okay now yeah okay so far uh, we have reached this point is this now consistent yeah so i need to integrate i need to find out e to the power capital at i need to integrate this right hand side e equation well now how do you do that i'm going to do some uh, change of uh, variable i am changing i'm defining tau as k plus 1t minus small t so d tau will become minus dt and then with uh, a little bit of algebra you can show that the integral can be changed to 0 to t e to the power a tau 
B D tau okay. So with this with this particular modification you can change this to okay. So nice thing about nice thing about these two matrices is that here and here K has disappeared okay. This is only a function of B A and sampling interval okay. It is only function of B A and sampling interval. So now I need to worry about I am going to define two more matrices phi and gamma okay and I am going to use this phi and gamma throughout to denote this linear difference equation model. This is my linear difference equation model which is computer oriented, computer relevant okay, digital control relevant whatever you want to call it. Output map does not change, there is no integration. Output map is a measurement map, is a static map. Why t is equal to c times xt, so y k at instant k is c times xk, so that, that does not change. I do not have to do anything for changing the measurement model, I only have to change the differential equation into difference equation, okay. So this phi gamma matrices are defined as exponential e to the power a t where t is the sampling interval and gamma is this complex integral that we have uh, listed here and we will now talk about how to compute these integrals. Uh, well just a reminder that piecewise constant inputs it only holds for manipulated variables. The disturbances are not piecewise constant. What is going out of my computer is piecewise constant. Okay, so developing a model for disturbances which are not really piecewise constant is a tricky business when it comes to computer oriented modeling. We are going to look at it, this tricky business, but uh, let me just preempt, let me just say that it is not an easy task. Okay, how do I compute? Lot of algebra. Uh, I assume that all of you are familiar with this. Grand equation, you can. Uh, I am going to take a special case first, then I will talk about how to do it for a general case through another method. Why I am doing it this way is because many times it is easy to get some insights. Let us assume that matrix A that we get after linearization of nonlinear differential equation, let us assume that its eigenvalues or its eigenvectors are such that they are linearly independent. If they are linearly independent, you can diagonalize matrix. Matrix diagonalization is a very, very powerful tool. It is used all over in applied uh, mathematics in engineering. What I am going to do is I am going to A as matrix psi capital lambda psi inverse. Capital lambda is a diagonal matrix. It has all the eigenvalues appearing on the diagonal, okay. Psi is a matrix in which you keep eigenvectors next to each other, okay. So this psi is a matrix in which this eigenvector is a column vector, okay. V1 is the column is a eigenvector for eigenvalue lambda 1, V2 is for lambda 2. There are n eigenvectors, I am just keeping them next to each other. This equation talks about a diagonalization of matrix A, okay. Is, is this clear? It's okay. I'm going to use this equation to compute matrix exponential. It makes it very, very easy. Uh, okay. Just a reminder: what is scalar case? Okay. Uh, this is my this is my uh, e to the power a t. I want to compute this. Uh, I am going to just rewrite this. Is everyone with me on this? Uh, what is a square? See, we have this. So, a square is psi lambda psi inverse into psi lambda psi inverse which is 
psi lambda square psi inverse okay. So likewise I can write a to power n as psi lambda power n psi inverse okay. This is the trick which I am going to use. So this is the trick which I am going to use to convert. Uh, I can just pull out psi and psi inverse. I get this i plus this inter you know the matrix inside the brackets is very nice. Why it is nice? Because lambda is a diagonal matrix. Okay, lambda is a diagonal matrix. So what is e to the power capital lambda t? E to the power capital lambda t is nothing but i plus lambda t plus. Now look at look at this matrix. If you actually compute this matrix, okay, uh, look at these diagonal terms. Diagonal terms will be this is a diagonal matrix, this is a diagonal matrix, this is a diagonal matrix. Okay, I am just combining that into one big matrix. This one big matrix is one plus lambda one t plus lambda one square. But this is nothing but e to the power lambda one t, right? And so on. So for each one of them, taps into e to the power lambda t. So this is very nice. So which means, you know, uh, computing matrix exponential is not that difficult if you know eigenvalues and eigenvectors. You just compute uh, eigenvectors. You compute e to the power lambda t. You are there. Well, computing gamma, once you know how to compute this, computing gamma also becomes very easy, okay. Uh, is, is everyone clear about this? Is this fine? Any difficulties? No? Okay. So computing this uh, matrix is in, in, inside matrix here, the one inside this. Now once you have eigenvectors decided, this psi is a constant matrix. then Computing these integrals is not at all difficult. It's very very easy. We just have to integrate each term separately. Uh, I'm talking about an alternate method of doing the same thing. How do I get this phi gamma? Well, I have this uh, differential equation, and then I'm going to now go through Laplace transforms. Okay. Uh, I show how to do it in time domain. Let us also look at it Laplace transform if you are comfortable with that. Okay. Take Laplace transforms on both sides. Okay. The difference is when you take Laplace transform of a differential equation, you will get x naught. Okay. What is x naught in this case? No, it is not at time 0, it is at time k. I am solving differential equation from time k to time k plus 1. So, here instead of x0, I am getting xk. We assume that x0 was 0, but xk is not equal to 0. I cannot ignore it. Okay. I have to take it into consideration. So this this equation, this equation, I have uh, this xk appearing, which cannot be ignored, of course. This brings in information about the past into the system. Okay, how am I going to take a Laplace transform of u, which is uh, starting at time kt and going up to time k plus one t? Okay, I modeled as a pulse. I modeled as a pulse. So pulse of duration t is entering the system. Okay, so it's like a forward step and then a delayed step in the negative direction. So you are starting from zero, going to uk, coming back to uk minus one. So that is how it is modeled. Okay, uh, so to go back to time domain, I should take Laplace inverse, and if I take this Laplace inverse, I will get phi. If I go to if I go to time domain from this equation, I will get phi e to the power a t is nothing but Laplace inverse of si minus a inverse. Okay, si minus a inverse, yeah.
uh, that is because of pulse pulse I am looking at input as a pulse square pulse okay and my gamma would be e to the power t integral 0 to t you have two integrals coming here into picture uh, and then combined will give you this particular integral I will just show it for one particular example yeah. x of t you will get uh, x at time you will get x of t and then you find out x at time k plus 1 t okay I have uh, skipped in between 2 3 steps because you cannot go to that detail you know you have to fill in the blanks okay <laughs> you will actually when you take Laplace inverse you will get x of t then you put t equal to k plus 1 t and then you will get the next equation okay. Is is it is that clear? Yeah. Okay. Let's take a simplified model. This is a, a simple problem from Astro and Wittenmark, one of the bench, one of the classical books in digital control. Um, so let's not worry about right. What is x and what is y? This is a DC motor model. Um, you know, just look at the algebra that we want to learn now. Okay. I want to compute phi. So I should compute SI minus A inverse. Now these kind of matrices probably you have not dealt, some of you at least may not have dealt with earlier. Uh, I am going to do uh, algebra on these matrices as if elements are numbers, okay. So how do you find out uh, matrix inverse? You take uh, adjoint, you take uh, you know determinant, I have done the same just look here this matrix si minus a inverse okay in fact uh, you will notice a lot of similarity with eigenvalue equation and si minus a what is eigenvalue how do you find eigenvalue lambda i minus a okay so just keep that in mind they are not going to be it will turn out that they are same things okay so if i actually do this algebra of si minus a inverse for this particular matrix i will get this uh, matrix here on the right hand side one upon and then i have to take a laplace inverse now how do you take laplace inverse element by element you take laplace inverse that is very easy uh, if i do that laplace inverse of that i will get this equation i choose one particular sampling interval t let's say 1 second point 1 second it's a dc motor maybe uh, 0 0.001 second then I will get these elements you know right now I have not computed for a specific t but you will get this element this is how compute this is how I what about gamma for gamma what I do is uh, I write a general expression for phi okay e to the power a tau and then I integrate if I integrate I will get this right hand side here uh, is this clear? Is this example clear? Just, just go over it. Okay. Uh, this is how I can compute. I can convert. Now, when you are going to do it, actually, uh, the exams for simple system will use this one of these, whichever you are comfortable with. I guess. But actually, when we, uh, the main thing in this course is going to be, you know, using MATLAB programs and MATLAB. You don't have to do all these equations writing. Is a uh, MATLAB command called C2D continuous to discrete you just give matrix uh, ABC matrices it will convert for you and will give you phi gamma C you do not have to do any uh, of these complex computations when it comes to a real uh, big problem. So yeah not kt k is gone see uh, first of all first of all phi and gamma are not functions of k at all they are functions of only a b and sampling interval there see you will get only the difference you will get only the difference between the two time instances you will never get k itself time invariant systems very very simple okay
Well, when matrix A is invertible, you can derive this formula for gamma. Okay, so if A has linearly independent eigen vectors, doesn't mean it is invertible. It may have a zero eigen value. It may not be invertible. But if it has linearly independent eigen, if it has if it has all eigen values which are non-zero, then you have a simplified formula for computing gamma. Okay, quadruple tank setup. What I did, of course. Uh, is asked MATLAB to do this. I just gave ABC matrices and MATLAB just gives me this through C2D. I don't have to do bigger and bigger matrices. You can't start writing your own programs. Uh, you just use MATLAB to convert. I get these numbers. This is a um, <coughs> okay. Uh, now I'm to go and introduce something uh, which is going to help me throughout the course. Uh, I have to use some kind of transforms to denote, to do some of the algebra that I need to do later on. Uh, and for that, I am going to use something called a shift operator, a time shift operator. Q is going to denote time shift operator okay now what are we considering here we are considering a discrete time signal okay a discrete time signal xk a discrete time signal xk is a collection is a collection of vectors i have put it in in curly brackets okay so See when you write when you write sin t, where t goes from some you know zero to some value or zero to infinity, what does it indicate? Does it indicate one value of the sign? It indicates the entire function going for where time goes from zero to infinity. It's it's the entire time function from zero to infinity. In this case, I am considering discrete time signals, so I have to look at sequences. I have to look at sequences. These are sequences of vectors. Okay, k is the index. I have sequences of vectors. Uh, I'm going to define a shift operator Q. Okay, Q is a time shift operator. When Q operates on x, I'll get one time in future. You see this here. When Q operates on this signal x k, I will get signal x k plus 1. Oh, there is 1. Okay, so you get the shifted sequence. In general, when I operate Okay, so I get shifted sequence. I get a shifted sequence. Make this correction, though it appears small conceptually, it means a lot. Okay, so when Q operates, Q is a shift operator, time shift operator. You know, I want to look at signals which are shifted in time. Now I am going to develop something called as a Q transfer function. Okay, I'm going to develop a Q transfer function. Why I need transfer functions? You know, progressively will become clear to you why I need transfer functions. So x k plus one. I'm going to now skip writing curly braces. Okay, it's understood we are dealing with sequences. Uh, every time I'm not going to write curly braces. So I'm going to taking a Q transform. So x k plus one is nothing but Q times q times xk is this step clear with this definition xk plus 1 is q times xk q transform of xk is nothing but xk it's q to the power 0 okay you are not shifting forward you are not shifting backwards is the same sequence okay so this equation this equation i can rearrange as qi minus phi okay times 
x k okay is equal to gamma times u k okay and then y is equal to y is equal to c of x k i have just eliminated x k x k is q i minus phi inverse times u k i have just substituted that here okay i got this i got this equation which is between only input and output okay y is equal to g q into u k okay is this clear any doubts here no okay so this this new animal is called as pulse transfer function pulse transfer function matrix we are going to deal with two different notations one is q transform or q operator shift operator and z transforms and well we have to use both the the reasons are different remember here i am still in time domain my signals are in time domain okay i have not gone to frequency domain when you do laplace transform what happens you start working in frequency domain right laplace transform you start working in frequency domain here this q operator is only time shift operator i am shift i am just representing into time okay uh, suppose i don't want i don't want to work with x i don't want internal variables state variables i just want to work with input and output okay i just want to look at uh, measured levels to voltages which are going to the uh, four tank setup i am not i am not all four levels so i have got rid of you know the states now my model is only between measured outputs and okay now what does this q how does it help me well uh, in one lecture i am trying to pack too many uh, concepts but well um, with some practice you will get what is if i do this uh, if i do this calculations see i already have uh, i already have phi matrix i already have gamma matrix i have calculated that for quadruple tank setup so i can just do this calculation again matlab will help me do this calculations and but for simple system two cross two systems you can do it by hand it's not so difficult okay um do you want to try this for the model that we derived maybe we should do that let's go back to the dc motor model so you have this phi and gamma you want to try converting let's let's uh, let's put this as you know uh, phi equal to you know this is alpha 1 minus alpha 0 1 and this gamma matrix is of the form 1 minus alpha t minus 1 plus alpha right okay so just try to compute what will be this matrix this is q i minus phi so this will be q 0 0 q minus alpha 0 1 minus alpha 1 this just try it just do it you know so this is q minus alpha uh 0 q minus 1 and minus 1 minus alpha and then you have to find out inverse of this okay so i want to find out qi minus phi inverse 
How will you find inverse of this? Yeah. So find out cofactor, find out determinant, uh, one upon determinant times cofactor transpose that will give you uh, adjoint uh, adjoint transpose or adjoint adjoint transpose adjoint transpose. So that will give you the uh, you know, and then. Uh, you know you can you can multiply this by uh, multiply pre multiply by c and by gamma okay what will be the transfer function matrix in this case will it be 1 cross 1 2 cross 2 what will it be in dc motor how many outputs are there in dc motor in dc motor there is only one output there is only one input you will get a scalar transfer function q transfer function okay you get a scalar q transfer function what is the relevance why am i so much uh, so i did this calculations for finding out the q transfer function between h1 h2 and v1 and v2 Okay. If I have a Laplace transfer function, if I have a Laplace transfer function, what does it indicate in time domain? What does it indicate in time domain? Let us say, let us say, Well, I want to give an analogy because we learn much better, much faster with analogy. See, if I have this Laplace transfer function, say y s by u s is equal to uh, b one s plus v naught a two s square plus a one s plus one. What does this indicate? What does this tell you? What is the time domain equivalent? I multiply both sides, I will get a2 s square plus a1s plus 1 into y of s is equal to b1s plus 1 into u of s. Okay. Now, this one is equivalent to a differential equation okay so a2 s square y will give me d2y by dt square so this is what was achieved when you go from time domain to Laplace domain? My differential operator becomes an algebraic operator in terms of S. Okay. In, in some sense, uh, well, even in time domain, people use two notations. Sometimes they use P instead of S and P is defined as D by DT. Okay, and you can write a p transfer function. P transfer function is b one p plus b naught, and denominator will be p square, a two p square, and so on. Okay, when you write a p transfer function, you will not write y and y s and u s. You will write y t and u t. You are in time domain. Okay. So uh, the advantage that I got when I went from, you know. Uh, time domain to Laplace domain algebraic expression. Okay, I could do manipulation. Okay, in controller design and all that. So uh, the same advantage I want to gain in discrete domain. That's why I have put this Q operator.
yeah so now this gives me a relationship between inputs and the outputs and i am going to convert this analogously to time domain difference equation okay i want to convert the transfer function what what happened in the laplace transform case i had a transfer function between input and the output okay i could convert the transfer function into a differential equation they were actually one and the same only they were different representations transfer function laplace transfer function and the second order differential equation which i wrote okay uh, let's just go back here uh, this transfer function and this differential equation are not different okay is the same the same thing with two different clothes you know it's it just a uh, change of draper it's not that you are looking at two different uh, entities so uh it's only the convenience of algebra that's why we went to laplace domain so uh coming back here i want to be use the same advantage here i want to go back to time domain difference equation okay i have just picked up i have just picked up one of them right now let's assume let's go back here let's go back here h1 is affected by what does this matrix tell you perturbation in level 1 is influenced by both perturbations in voltage 1 and perturbations in voltage 2 how how does it affect through this through this uh, you know transfer function matrix q transfer function matrix let make a simplifying assumption that perturbation v1 is zero okay let me make a simplifying assumption only v2 is changing i want to find out how h1 is affected by v2 okay so i am just looking at the sub component of this model h1 affected by v2 v1 is zero okay now uh i have just divided here if you look here i converted this from equation in q to equation in q minus 1 okay just algebra what i do next ah there is a small error here okay well what is q minus 1 time shift by 1 what is q minus 2 time shift by 2 okay so i'm going to convert this into a linear difference equation okay these this linear differential this linear difference equation here and this q transfer function are equivalent no difference there's different representations the same advantage that i get doing algebra of laplace transfer function i want to derive here using this q shift operator okay there is no other purpose but uh, this gives me relationship between only the input and the output okay yeah basically i want to write current see i have done it in 10 to the 2 to the power minus 1 uh, that is because i want to write k is the current instant okay uh, so my convention is going to be k is current k minus 1 is past k minus 2 is 2 in past k plus 1 is future okay so when i am writing a difference equation particularly for the behavior at current time instant see i cannot uh, well we'll be talking sometime later about future predictions but right now i want to write in terms of what is current in terms of what has happened in the past that's why i have put it like this okay i could have written uh, converted into difference equation as hk plus 2 and all that but k is my present 
k plus 1 is future, k plus 2 is 2 in future, k minus 1 is 1 in past, k minus 2 is 2 in past and so on. So I want to write a difference equation which talks about current equal to something in the past. Actually this difference equation very nicely tells you about the dynamical systems, okay. It tells you that current what is happening now, okay, is effect of what has happened in the past, okay. See, uh, level 1 at time instant k, current instant is a linear combination of 4 terms here, not a difference equation. It has a memory of 2 levels in the past, h k minus 1, h 1 k minus 1, h 1 k minus 2, weighted by those 2 coefficients are just weighting factors, okay. Then it is also influenced by the new inputs, what are the new inputs? b 2 k, but remember if I, if my computer sends out a signal v 2 k at instant k, it will not have an instantaneous effect on y, it is always a delay of 1. If I take an action, its effect will be seen one sample later, okay, one sample later. Our model was x k plus 1 is function of u k, okay. What you do now will have effect one sample later. One sample later. So uh, all all dynamical systems have memory, and this is evident from this equation. Um, I get a linear difference equation model here. Is everyone with me on this? Is this clear? Why I went to Q transforms because uh, I could now just talk about relationship between an output and an input. Okay. That's that's the reason. Oh, now should I do it in this class or should I not? Okay, let's do it in the next class. Uh, frequency domain. We are doing controller design. We need Nyquist plots. Uh, I don't think you fondly remember Nyquist plots and Bode plots, but. Uh, you have to use Nyquist plots when you do control. Um, my course is mostly going to be in time domain, so you will understand a lot of things. Uh, frequency domain is minimal, but uh, there is no way you can escape frequency domain. You have, in some cases, you need frequency domain interpretations, which are very very nice, and uh, there is no other way of uh, going about. So uh, we have to touch frequency domain. So we have to. Study this Q transform is only a time domain uh, arrangement, I would say, a time domain arrangement. You talk about shift in signal and then you deal with this using time shift operators, difference equation representation. Here I have to uh, talk about a Z transform, okay. Now Z transform is defined as, a Z transform is defined for a signal, infinite signal starting from time 0 to time infinity, okay. We are dealing with signals which are time 0 to time infinity, right. See when I start my level control system, I will start getting level measurements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and if I do not stop, I am going to time infinity, right, virtually, I am going to time infinity. So I want to talk about signals which are 0 to infinity. Infinity is some kind of idealization here, in reality you will stop the plant after one day or few days or whatever. Um, now here z is a complex variable. Um, I, I want you to understand z transform at a working level not from the complex algebra viewpoint or complex uh, analysis viewpoint. Um, take this with a pinch of salt right now. Um, we are not going to compute uh, those. Uh, Counter integrals in this course, but the inverse transform. Once you define transform, you have to define inverse transform. Transform is. Uh, I'll give you analogy for transforms. You have some signal, say uh, x. Okay, and many times uh, you want to work with some kind of a 
transform signal. So you multiply this by a matrix A which is invertible and you get a new vector Y. Okay. So this is a transform. I transform every X to a vector Y by pre multiplying by a invertible matrix A. Okay. And then how do I recover X? No. A inverse Y. Okay. Transforms are useful. They they help you, uh, you know, uh, sometimes simplify the equation. Okay. I'll give you an example. We are looking at this uh, d x by d t is equal to a x. We also have b u. Right now, let's ignore b u just for a second. Okay. Actually, we have this when we are looking at equations. We have b times u. Let's assume for the time being, this is zero. Okay. Now my a is a full matrix. Okay, n cross n matrix. My a is n matrix. Let's assume that this is diagonalizable. If it is diagonalizable, then I can write psi lambda psi inverse, right? So I'm going to write this equation as d x by dt is equal to psi lambda psi inverse x. Everyone with me on this? A little bit of algebra will tell me that psi inverse dx by dt is equal to lambda times psi inverse x. Fine? Everyone with me on this? So this term is nothing but d psi inverse x by dt is equal to lambda psi inverse x. Okay, you might wonder why why, why I am writing like this. I am going to define a new variable called z. So this is my z, new vector called z. Okay. So what is this z? Z is a vector which is obtained by psi inverse x. How do you get x back? Psi z. Fine. This is my transformation. This is my transformation. Okay. Now, with this new definition, what happens is dx by dt which is a times x okay with this z defined as psi inverse x will give me dz by dt well this this z here is not z transform it's just a vector which is into lambda z what is lambda It's a diagonal matrix. There are zeros here. There are zeros here. What is the advantage of looking at this differential equation through z over through x? Here, this is nothing but d z i by d t is equal to lambda i z i, where z i is the ith element. I get n differential equations which are decoupled. Which are not related to each other. If A is a full matrix, which has you know all many many non-zero elements, then uh, solving the original problem is much more difficult than solving this problem. And I can I can solve for Z, and then I can go back to X using inverse transform. Right? I can go back to X through inverse transform. Uh, So transforms help. Transforms really help in solving problems. What is Laplace transform? What is how it is defined? If I have a signal f t, integral zero to 
e to the power well conceptually this is not different from you know x is a vector when operated by operator psi inverse gives me vector z okay what is equivalent to matrix here integral it is called integral kernel this integral kernel is equivalent to this multiplying by a mat matrix okay why do we get integral kernel here we are dealing with uh, functions not finite dimensional vectors we are dealing with a function ft is a function from time 0 to time infinity ft is a function so conceptually conceptually these two are similar equations they are not different they are one and the same conceptually okay so yeah no no i want you to understand the philosophy of transformation what i am saying is that why do we transform one is okay algebraically similarity transformation but both are invertible transformations yeah so just draw an analogy one is of course in finite dimensions the other one is in infinite dimensions okay so just draw an analogy just to understand what is happening in transforms then see what was what was the point here the point here was when i transform it's easy to work with the transformed signal okay it was easy to solve the differential equation in a transformed domain and then you could go back to the original domain you could do some algebra in transformed domain go back to the original domain that was the idea so so when i'm going to define this transforms uh the idea is that i should be able to uh, do some things simplified simple uh, algebra which is in the transformed domain and then uh move back to the original domain so this is my uh, z transform my z transform is uh, defined as uh, uh, you know uh, fk where fk here is the time domain signal at time instant k and z to the power minus k z here is a complex variable it is related to laplace variable through this equation z is equal to e to the power t s as i said i'm not going to go too deep into this you can you can probably refer to astrom and wittenmark or franklin and powell i, I have given these books in my i'll be giving this references as a part of my lecture notes uh so well just like laplace transform has some nice properties z transform also has some nice properties one is linearity if you add two signals and take its z transform it's equivalent to linear combination of individual z transforms uh property that is going to be used uh very often by us is time shift okay z transform of a time shift signal is nothing but z to the power minus you will find for practical purposes q and z are similar okay as far as uh to difference equation is concerned they turn out to be quite similar not identical but quite similar uh so you have a z transform of a signal which is shifted in the past and you have z transform of a signal which is shifted in future okay so i have given here uh the expressions the derivations are uh not so difficult and you can find them in a standard textbook well what what do you have in uh, Lap when you study laplace transform you study final value theorem uh, initial value theorem well same things are here you have final value theorem and initial value theorem and so on uh what is going to be most important for us is this particular this particular time shift you take z transform of a time sh time shifted signal you will get uh, this expression you will get z to the power n and you will get z to the power minus n when it is shifted in the past okay uh just some examples of z transforms if you take this uh, simple signal you know 
uh, a step function. Then I can take alpha out and then take a you know summation of one up that uh, this is. So, this in any uh, digital control book you will have z transform tables and which is similar to what you have in for Laplace transforms for ramp and for sinusoid and then you can uh, go to a book on uh, digital control you will find listing of uh, all these transform. Uh, the way I am going to use this well I will again uh, revisit this in my uh, next class but I will just preempt what I want to do. I want to take a z transform of my difference equation okay and I want to get a z transfer function matrix just like s transfer function matrix I want to get a z transfer function matrix. Uh, when you have this q thing why do you want z because z is related to e to the power t s where s is complex number and then you can draw frequency response using that interpretation that is not possible with time shift. In time shift you are working in time domain okay uh, when you define these operators at some point we are going to use frequency domain interpretation and that is why we need this z here okay. Uh, so my z transform is uh, I am going to take a z transform of both the sides uh, and this equation will finally uh, yield something which looks very very similar to the Q transform nothing different okay final expressions are going to look not different from Q transform just Q is replaced by Z philosophically they are completely different in one case you are working with uh, time domain in other case you are working with frequency domain expressions turn out to be similar okay. So uh, I can uh, find out pulse transfer function uh, for my system uh, by converting my difference equation into pulse transfer function and I will visit this again in my next class in the beginning but I get pulse transfer function all that I have done is same thing except Q is replaced by Z here okay but notice I do not have any, any more here uh, you know H1 of K and H2 of K that is H1 of Z H2 of Z and V1 of Z V2 of Z and this is my Z domain pulse transfer function this has been obtained using linearization of a first principle model okay. Uh, so I will stop here and then uh, we will proceed from here in the next class.